If you're able to hit hit the ball hard, stop very quickly after impact, you've had to like rotate your core. It has really engaged that. You can't you can't have a soft core, you can't not move your body. All right, Zane, so what I did there was the old hit it hard and stop, quick drill. And we can see that launch really low, felt great off the clock face. I want you to talk about the benefits of this drill. Yeah, again, like, like with most, most of the drills that I do, depending on the intent, has like different outcomes. But I mean, this one, I would say primarily for strike, grinds. Yeah. You could lead it into a driver, but you probably injure yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's good to do off grass, because yeah. that also helps slow the club head down when it, come, when it comes through. <laughs> but what's it, what's it doing? One of, the, one of the first things for good players, club face stability. Yeah. Have you got a message? You'd be amazed actually, like, get, actually get tour players messaging me on Instagram. Yeah. Saying like, uh, how do I, can, like, I need to get a bit more club face control. It's just like, right, do you want to unpick 25 years of work to try and get you to talk about this? Or it's just like, you know what, it's going to hit an hour worth of punch shots. Like, you'll, you'll, you'll work it out. Yeah. And I think uh, if you go back through and look at, um, I think Rick Sessenhouse talks about Colin Murakawa's mm -hmm. amazing iron play. What's it done is hours and hours of punch shots. Yeah. So what does it do? So essentially, as you, if you have, if you're able to hit hit the ball hard, stop very quickly after impact, you've had to like rotate your core. Correct. Has really engaged that you can't you can't have a soft core. You can't not move your body. Mm -hmm. You can't not move your middle and stop the club quickly. Yeah. Just because of the centrifugal like, weight of the uh, force of the club yeah. the weight that builds up just yeah. it would just take over Correct. and the club's up, up past my head so it's like a really good way to manage club face manage that ball like you know if it, once you can get to a point where you can go ball turf yeah put the brakes on it means you turned your middle really well the club's not passing your hands yeah it hasn't up here. nearly as much yet. and then one of the keys to do what I find with it is actually to get people to do it without hit, actually hitting it low yeah. So I should just hit a normal ball flight yeah. off of that, which means you have to work hard to it. Because you can, you can just slam the club into the floor. Correct. And the, and the club stops. Yeah. But it's a bit different. You just go, right, I'm going to hit my six iron. I'm going to get my normal ball flight. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to try and stop the club, stop the head, before it passes the hands. Yeah. So I keep it lower than the hands. And that would, so that would be... So the overtaking out of rates now. That would be ultimate body control being able to do that, right? Yeah. Because it is very easy to go and just jam that thing in real steep. Yes. And then see that low ball flight. Yeah, so you then can cheat it. You can, you you can, can, cheat, you can it. cheat it. Yeah. Yeah. But I would say that uh, you, you mentioned with good players trying to control their flight. Now, it's very different from the camp of the amateur golfer who may need to get a better feeling of how to get the arm structured through the ball and rotate their body. Better players would generally do this mainly because they would have a little bit too much face rotation with the amount of speed that they are swinging at and for the difficulty of the golf courses that they play. Yeah. They might be trying to uh, ensure that they're not over curving the ball. But for amateur golfers, this is more of a sequencing drill, I yeah. would say. This is, this is how we line things up at the moment of impact and through of how we get them into a position where you can see that the club head relative to my hands yeah. was a different orientation. Uh, like for an amateur golfer, you have them doing, I'll get players to do it probably 50% speed. Yeah. And that's kind of a way of teaching to get rid of the chicken wing. Yeah. Because you put you put across, the head, again, the club head gets too high. Yep. So being able to hit 50%, stop club quickly after impact, arms are, are straight to do that rather yeah. than yeah. Uh, pulling, pulling up. So like, you know, and, and I would say, and the other part to it would be, you, it's much easier to feel like you get the hands ahead of the club heads. Yeah. Which is helping like low point strike contact, which is like, you know, as you already said, like it's the most important part. Mm. It's, it is the most important fundamental mm. that differentiates the best player from the worst player. Yeah. We all know that if DJ didn't play golf, Dustin Johnson didn't play golf for six months. Yeah. You could give him this six iron and he would go whoosh. What we do, he would strike it and it would, off he goes. Yeah. Whereas we all know there's a geezer at our club who plays three night, three days a week, yeah. has done for the last 20 years, and he'll fat one like 30 yards yeah. every every week. Yeah. So that, that's the main differentiator. So it's a way, it's a nice, another nice way of like learning strike, yeah. hands head, head of the club head at impact, and then how that matches with your body as you turn through. Yeah. How it all comes through together, straight arms, 
not chicken wing. So let's say you're teaching the general recreational golfer here to do this drill. You said start off slow. You'd obviously map it out without a golf ball first, just so you could get a feeling of that. Yeah. Now, backswing length for this saying, how far back would they do this? Like if they're just doing a practice swing. Yeah, so like really no, no, nowhere past shoulder height. Exactly, there you go. Great, and would you recommend they finish here or even lower for the first couple of times that they're doing this exercise? Yeah, so the, so the, the, the checkpoints really are, can you do it? Do it at whatever speed, so if you have to slow it right down to where, when, when the shaft gets to level, yeah. or when your arms get to level, sorry, yeah. that the club head is on level with your hand or lower. Yeah. Not past it. Perfect, so from the face on view so here. Even if that's really slow, just take it as slow to begin with. There you go. There you go, yeah. Yeah. And even playing golf my whole life, it's still one of those things that requires conscious effort, but I will take note too. I can certainly feel the connection underneath my armpits yeah. as well, yeah. with my arms staying on my body, which means that the rotation and the movement and extension of the body is what is facilitating this movement of the club head. It is not this pull of the arms yeah, by any means. There is yeah. none of that. Yeah. So starting off slow, it's important that if you are unable to get to this position and you just want the instant gratification of trying to hit it as hard as you can and all of a sudden the club's going over there, you've got to start off slow yeah. because that's the way that we learn any skill to create the pathways within our body to ensure that we're able to recreate it subconsciously when we hit a golf ball, slow, repetitive, conscious reps over and over and over and over again. And I would say 90% of the people I get do this. They go, they go in, they hit a shot and they go like, like this, is that it? Like, no, like, I'm, I'll literally write, next one, hold your follow through. Yeah. And they go and hold the follow through. I have to walk in like, like, like that. Like, yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Like this. I think the, de the detail to that would be um, when, you, when you hit shots from your eye line, when you hit, when you do hit the shot and stop quick after, after impact, that the, um, which you'd be able to demo to the camera, would be the club head sits right of where Correct. the hands are for a right-handed golfer. Correct. So let's say a traditional extension chicken wing look, the club head would travel a long way inside the hands from this down the line. But what's Zane saying there, if you do this, and I'll hit one down there, yeah, there we go. can see that the hands are left and the head is out yeah. to the right. And a good way to kind of feel that was something that I got from, um, from Mac O'Grady. He said, I feel like your right wrist is like, has like been frozen with liquid nitrogen yeah. on the way down. Yeah. They just, uh, it feels like it doesn't move. So it's, it's, yeah. like, it's like really like extended back. Perfect, yeah. And I would say that, uh, when players are doing that, that doesn't mean that you consciously freeze that right wrist throughout the whole swing, guys. This is just simply just something drill, that you do with the high drill. to put in the put in the brakes on. Because we see so many players, they go, let's get that right arm in as much as they can. Let's try and hold it off as much as they can. Well, you're not going to be able to actually perform that out on the golf course when push comes to yeah. shove because it's not a reaction to a target or yeah. an athletic motion. Well, essentially, you think in the downswing, yeah, like the right wrist will, will be we back. Yeah. And then essentially like, yes, you want to be, it's going to feel like you're holding it forever, but we all know that it actually goes from here all the way through, but we were just trying to slow that down. So the feel would be that I'm going to feel like I'm keeping that frozen, but I know it's going to go from like here to, to yeah. here on the downswing. But it's like, a, it's that feel part of it that's, co that's coming in. But you know, it's like, if you can, if you can slow that down, that is that one piece, it's going to help you keep the hands ahead of the club heads. And then if you keep your body moving around the corner. Correct. That's, that's, diff that's very different to like, arms come off the body and being dragged. Exactly. That's keeping this, what feels like frozen, but keep turning. Through the ball, yeah. I think, I think a real great visualization for a lot of players here is like if they got out of their golf posture, they imagine they have a paintbrush and the paintbrush is pointing this direction. They want to ensure that they're not flicking the paint off the brush and they're able to get a nice smooth long stroke using the pivot of their body along the wall. Yeah. Whereas a lot of players would start drawing circles and, yeah. you know, all over in an abstract yeah. fashion there. So yeah. the back of that, it's not locked out by any means. It's just simply not as active, right? We're not trying to yeah. force it. We're not trying to drag it. It's simply just allowing it to stay in this condition as we pivot our body through. And you can kind of, you can kind of do it on the, on the floor in terms of you can like, like, like that paintbrush analogy is really good. You can start with the club on the floor, maybe like a, maybe 10 inches back. Mm and make a mini semicircle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And notice, notice how Zane's just using his chest and his hips really well and extending through the ball. A lot of players would just look at your arms there, Zane, and they'd just go, oh, I'm just 
It's yeah. just moving it through, but essentially that whole movement is simply yeah. driven from that pivot and extension of the body. Exactly, yeah. So you're just making a mini semicircle. This is kind of frozen, and I'm using all this to turn around that corner. Yeah. Right, awesome. So I'll jump in. I'll get that feeling, just doing that combo little drill there. I really like that. I've used a lot of the um, these ones here where you will like push and extend. Yeah. But I like that you're starting with the club head back a little bit. Yeah. Just to get the feeling of that trail wrist in that position and then using the body just as that sensation. That feels great. Yeah, and they have to make, really make sure you turn the way through to get that club out of the ground. Correct. There you go. And that one there, like for yeah. me, I could feel that body worked really hard through the left and that was probably one of the best strikes today. Yeah, no, very nice. Work. Cheers, mate.